In our science segment, we're telling you more about the so-called mutant wolves of Chernobyl. 38 years after the nuclear disaster, animals roaming the exclusion zone are still exposed to high levels of ionizing radiation. But researchers have also found that part of their genetic data seems to be resilient to increased risk of cancer. To talk more about it, let's bring in our science editor, Julia Seeger. Thanks so much for bringing us this super interesting topic. I can't Charlie. wait to hear more about it. But let's maybe step back and set the scene for us here. What is the exclusion zone exactly? Well, let's go back on what actually happened on April 26, 1986, in the middle of the night, uh, reactor number four of the Lenin nuclear power plant in Chernobyl, Ukraine, exploded, uh, generating one, if not the worst, nuclear disaster in history. And uh, that explosion created a plume of radioactive contaminated dust that then spread to the rest of Europe, as you can see uh, here, even as far as Greece. And everything was contaminated from homes, buildings, and businesses to also soil, plants, and water over a 1,000 square mile area covering parts of Ukraine, but also Belarus. And altogether, it's about 350,000 inhabitants that were evacuated. Uh, and altogether, more than 100,000 actually never came home because they created this exclusion zone. It's a 30 kilometer radius around the reactor uh, that still now remains eerily abandoned, at least by humans, because wildlife actually never left. Now today, the fauna and the flora are still very much exposed to high levels of radiation, 11 millirems altogether. That's six times more the legal safety limit for a human. Now, some animals, of course, after the disaster died, others developed cancer indeed, and some species are believed to have a lower uh, life expectancy today. But the fact of the matter is most species and more species Species are now thriving within the exclusion zone than before. You have deer, elk, you also have wild boars, stray dogs, rabbits, uh, uh, birds, and what's even more interesting is that certain species that we thought were on the brink of extinction have come back, like the Przewalski horses, or bisons, or even brown bears. And what's interesting is that as a result, this region, this exclusion zone, is now considered the largest natural reserve of wildlife in Europe. So because these animals have been so exposed to radiation, they've essentially developed a, a resistance to it and therefore a resistance to cancer. Well, indeed, there are many uh, studies that have looked at this exclusion zones to try to understand what, the, what was the impact on wildlife. And building on this, uh, you have Kara Love, who's a, an evolutionary biologist at Princeton University, who decided to launch as early as 2014 a scientific mission to try to understand exactly what were their consequences and how those Chernobyl uh, wild um, gray wolves specifically, how they had survived despite generations of exposure to uh, radioactive uh, particles. And so she had the idea of putting these um, these radio collars to measure the level of radiation because, of course, you have radiation coming from the environment, but you also have internal radiation because they consume, um, you know, plants, for instance, that are contaminated. And one thing led to another. She st also started looking at blood samples and the genome, and what she found was absolutely mind-boggling. Let's take a listen. basics of just how much radiation are they exposed to, we find that they're chronically exposed to elevated levels of radiation than you or I are. And then looking at signs of natural selection within this population. So they, have they adapted to this radiation in certain ways? And the closer we're looking, we look at their immune system, we look at the blood cell composition within their blood, and this is really reminiscent of what we see in human cancer patients who are treated with radiation. And then if we look at from like an evolution and natural selection perspective, we start to see signs that they're adapting to this stress and adapting in a way that seems to be conferring a level of anti-tumor immunity to some degree. We both see that from the way that the genes are expressed and how they're interacting. And we also see it in their DNA. So these gray wolves have developed somewhat of a resistance to the radiation, and it's done through natural selection, as Kara Love just explained. So the wolves uh, who survived and who went on to reproduce were the ones who had that gene that was resistant to cancer. And so now we have about, we're on the eighth or the ninth generation of wolves following this uh, disaster. Now, of course, the question is, how do you actually translate this knowledge to try to treat uh, cancer in humans? For now, we can't say, but uh, Kara Love's team is cautiously optimistic as she 
put it, that one day it's going to help, uh, you know, reach a new understanding. For now, the research, though, has been halted, of course, because of the geopolitical situation on the ground. Mm. Okay. So another unintended consequence of this war, but it does seem at least like the animals are are thriving. They are indeed, yeah. and they do have the data uh, dating back from 2014 and even uh, you know before COVID because they also had to halt because of COVID. But they do have that data, and they're still looking at it, and they're still uh, testing different hypotheses today. All right, Julia Seeger, our science editor, thanks for bringing us a good news story. Always great to have one of those on the program. Thank you, indeed.